Mount Slayer Garage. Today we're going to be working on our 2020 Polaris Chaos. I bought this thing brand new uh, when it came out a few years ago. Been a great sled, it's completely stock. Problem is, track's been ripped up a little bit in the low snow years. Um, missing quite a few lugs. So we've got this new track here we're going to put on it. Had a, quite a few people message me last year wanting me to do a video on how to do a track exchange on a Polaris. So I'm going to do it. Um, this one has the be Polaris belt drive, the quick drive on it. Um, most common mountain drive setup, Polaris mountain sleds, is a quick drive belt drive system. Probably the easiest by far snowmobile to swap a track on is with the quick drive system because it's so easy to get off rather than having to take your chain case apart. So if you have one of these, I can literally pull it if I have the track out of this in less than 15 minutes. Pretty simple. We're going to go through how to take it off, um, put it back on. And uh, before we do that, we've got to get this thing up in the air so we can get the suspension out, the track out. And there's a number of different ways you can do this. You want to make sure it's safely up in the air so it doesn't fall over while you're working on it. Uh, in the past, I've used a, a bumper jack like this. I made this bumper jack a number of years ago. There's a number of websites that sell these. Just uh, go up like this. Gives you pretty good room. I'd like it a little bit higher than that, but that's one decent way to do it. Another way to do this, I've seen a lot of people suspend their snowmobile from the ceiling. If you've got a secure place up there, you can either hook it to the bumper. The carbon fiber little aluminum bumpers on this aren't the strongest things in the world, so I like to hook it to the um, foot rest back here. I think they're a little more stout. But. So I have my electric winch. I lift a lot of stuff like this. So just lift this thing up and get it pretty high off the ground. I'm, I would, when I'm doing this, I could do it a lot higher. And the last thing, if you have one of these uh, snowmobile um, lifts, these are pretty nice to have in your garage. Just lift this thing really nicely, evenly, all the way off, off the ground. Um, the only part of this, we are pulling the suspension out and pulling the track out. This part of it here can kind of get in the way. So I'm not going to use it for this. I'm actually going to use it by lifting the back off the ground from the ceiling. But those are the different ways you can lift it up. You maybe make up your own ways too, but those are probably the most three most common ways. Next thing you need to do with this, you're going to have to get to your clutch side down here. So you have to pull your clutch off, you have to pull your panel off, pull your secondary clutch off. The same thing on the other side, you have to pull the panel off. And then we'll show you how this thing comes out. All right, so now we're ready to do the first part of this. We're going to loosen the track. There's two steps to this. One, we need to loosen the axle bolt. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to come, we're going to loosen this. This is a 16 millimeter on this axis. And we're just going to loosen it. We're going to, we don't need to take that all the way out. And then on both sides, you're going to have this screw here that pushes on back on the track and, and tightens the tension on it. We need to loosen the lock nut. I've already loosened the lock nut on the other side. So that's now loose. That's also 16 millimeter. And then if I show you here on the other side, the tip of this bolt has a 10 millimeter head on it right here. We are going to go in here with, the, with our 10 millimeter socket and we're just going to loosen that and, watch, and you can watch the track kind of come back right here as the tension loosens on it. See how that slides? We want it to slide all the way back again so like that so it's as loose as it's going to go. Now, if we come around to the other side, we're going to take a bar off all the bolts, all of these. There's one here, one there, and there's the same bolts on the other side. Okay, and these are 17 millimeter sockets. Let's just take that one out, and that one out. And you see the suspension just kind of drop like that. Now, the suspension's completely loose. So if we lift up our machine now, we should be able to go in here and pull the, the suspension out of here. Just like, and so that's easy of that is to pull the suspension out. Next part of this, we need to get the drive shaft out, which, which is this up here. And we're going to come over here. We need to loosen all those torque bolts on this side. Other side, we need to take the belt drive off. So we'll come back and do that in just a second. All right, now on this side, to take the jack shaft off, you need to pull your secondary clutch off. So you need to use this tool that screws in here that loosens your belt, take your belt off. And then this 15 millimeter bolt that's in here like this, pull this out and the secondary clutch just slides off. So the next thing we're going to need to do, there's these six torques 
bits right here. We need to take all six of those off. They're actually held in place by a plate on the other side, so you don't have to worry about holding a nut on the other side. It's 40 Torx bit. And so we just plate comes off and the jack shaft bearing to stay on the jack shaft right there and then we'll just leave this stuff here you can see I have this pulled down I have a little bungee cord that's hooked onto this it just kind of holds it out of the way which makes it really nice to get up in there now on the other side of this if we go over to the other side kind of do, gonna do the same thing but with our uh, drive belt here that's our quick drive belt now I've got another video on how to pull the quick drive belt off and how to put it back on but I'm just gonna show you real quick here so you got your 15 millimeter socket. And there's usually a lot of Loctite on these, so they come off, they're pretty stiff to get on. Now, you gotta be careful using a gun like this because these have a lot of torque. I usually only take stuff apart with this because I worry about breaking something. Then usually you can just get these to slide off just like that. Okay, the next thing we want to do, we need to get the drive shaft out so we can pull the track out. And one of those steps of doing that is getting the track up out of the way so you can get the drive shaft out. A couple of little tricks I've found out over the years, especially if you're doing this by yourself. I just get one of these straps. You can buy these little pull straps like this at um, Harbor. And I, the back of the track, I just pull out of the way. And I try and get it as high up in there as I can. And I put a little cloth in here because I don't want this metal thing to scratch the powder coat on my tunnel. And then the other thing, you need to get the front of the track, this part here, you need to get that held up really high out of the way. And the way I found out to do that it holds it really well is you get a two by four or a two by six like this. You put it up under here. And then you get a, this is a Craftsman screwdriver. I put through this hole and it comes up under here. And the end of this hooks up onto the two by four. Then this end, this end, you push this end and you hook it up underneath your See how it's hooked up under there? And that holds your track right up tight against your tunnel. Now we're under here. You want to push your track all the way against the front of your bulkhead like that. And it's pretty tight. So this side is loose. This side is still in the bearing. So we need to move the whole thing over this way. So if you hold your track up, this thing, over like that. And then you can just drop it out like that. And then you can take this screwdriver out you have in here, drop your track, and then drop that strap. Just like that, and our track's out. So, uh, really nice way to do it, pretty simple. I don't know if we've been taking breaks, that maybe even probably would have taken less than 15 minutes, but I've done it before. I know what all the screws and bolts are, what sizes they are, so. Um, Really the easiest track you're ever gonna pull out on any snowmobile ever, because it's got the belt drive. Now when you get your track to go back in, there's one thing you gotta be aware of is you need this track to go in in the correct rotation when it turns on your snowmobile. And every track is gonna have arrows. See these arrows? It's an arrow there, an arrow there. The normal rotation of your track like this, the arrows point towards the front of your sled. So when I take this track out, put this track in, when this is sitting like this, I want these arrows pointing towards the front of the thread and the way this track's going to rotate. All right, now before we put it back together, you're going to, when you have your suspension out, you're really going to want to check it and go over it. Just make sure there's nothing broken. There's no bolts missing. Look at all the joints. I've, I've seen the arms crack down here. Just go over all the joints. Make sure everything's good. Make sure everything's tight. All the Zerk fittings like these, you're going to want your grease gun and grease those while it's out. It's just a lot easier to grease them while you're out. Make sure if you have any shock settings you want to do, um, you change your shocks, it's easier to do with it out. And then also inspect your shocks, just make sure they're not leaking oil or anything. Just give everything a once over, make sure everything's the way it should be. The other thing to do, you want to check your high facts. It says plastic thing go down here. These wear, especially in your, if you're in areas where you don't have a lot, you have to do a lot of trail riding in. Now, if you look at this real close, it's got, it's got a line right here. If you can see that line built into it. So this can wear from the bottom from here up to where that line is. But if you start wearing to that line, it's time to replace your high facts. But you, this, you can see they can wear quite a bit before they get to where they're completely worn out. So that's how to tell if your high facts is worn out. 
The other thing I don't know if you noticed, when I pulled this off, this wheel fell off. They fall off pretty easily. They're not held on by much. So when you want to put this back on, this goes on there. There's a little spring washer that goes on next, like that. And then this, this has a little Allen wrench in it. Put that on, tighten that uh, Allen down, and that just holds the wheel on so it doesn't fall off while you're putting everything back together. So now that's all tightened up. We're gonna put the track in. If we look down here, we got the arrows on our track pointing towards the front of the machine where this is gonna rotate like this. It's pointing that way. That's correct. So everything is correct. Suspension's ready to go in. So let's put the drive shaft in and uh, then we'll put everything back together. Here we're down on the machine again. You can see we've got it pretty high off the ground. We've got our strap on the back like we had before when we took it out. We've got our piece of wood held in place by the screwdriver. Now, if you do this by yourself, it's not too bad. Make sure the track is pushed all the way up into there. Now, in mind, when we put the drive in, the bearing goes on this side, which is there. This plate has to go in through this big hole here. So you get that up through there. And then if you look over here, our shaft is lined up with the hole there. And you just push it over like that, and we're in. And then we just go over this side. We put the plate and the torque screws back in. Now with our drive shaft sitting in there, we can kind of set our suspension back in place. We want to put the tip in first and then the back of it. We just slide in like this. All right, so we got that sitting in. Then we can let the sled down. We can put these bolts back in and we can just put everything back together. Okay, now we're gonna put this side of the drive shaft back together. This has this notch cut out of it. There's a little rivet on the bottom, so this is going to go facing down like that. With each of these bolts, I like to put a little bit of blue Loctite on them, just to make sure that they're not going to come out, because it's not one thing you want coming out of here, is those coming loose. So you can put each of those in. These on the outside bolt into the frame. These three here bolt into the plate that holds the bearing in. So you're going to want to reach around the backside and make sure you line up this hole here with the screw hole or the nuts on the back side. So we'll put blue Loctite on each of those six bolts, torque those down to spec. We'll put our secondary clutch on, put the bolt back in it, our belt back on, torque that bolt down to spec, and then we'll go to the other side and put the drive belt and the quick drive gears back on. Now I'm not going to go over the quick drive gears because I have a whole video on um, replacing the quick drive belt and replacing the quick drive gears. It takes a little bit, so if you need to know how to put the other side together, go to my quick drive belt video and uh, look at it because I'm not going to go over that in this video. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is tighten down the suspension. There's this one bolt here, and there's one bolt over here on the drop bracket that we need to put in, and then on the same bolts on the other side. Usually, what you have to do is you have to get this bolt hole here lined up with the suspension bolt on the inside. So if you hold the suspension with one hand, you can kind of pull it. You see how I kind of can kind of line that up like this and get the bolt started in that hole and then I can get that one come back here we kind of do the same thing with this one get that lined up like that okay then we're going to want to do the same thing on the other side the other thing we have to do is tighten the track back up so remember these the adjustment screws right here. We're going to need to go in this side. And on this side here, if you look over here, I marked with a Sharpie how, about how far back we're going to want to take this, my Sharpie line. This is a different track, so it'll probably be a little bit different than the other one. So I'm going to take it back about that far. All right, so I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to tighten the opposite side one. And then I'm going to tighten this one. You can see I'm just going to take this back to about where my line is, about right there. I'm not going to go through the whole process of how to tighten a track. I have another uh, video that shows you how to tighten the track and get everything just perfect. The track alignment back and forth this way, the track tension as far as how far it drops. So go back and look for that video. We got the whole sled put together. We can take this off. We got our belt drive, our quick drive put down the right side. We got our clutch our belt on, our clutch torque down, everything here is good. Um, just remember when you do this, maybe sure you check your belt alignment and your belt deflection. Put everything back together so it's good to go this winter. Set the track tension and the track alignment. 
like uh, my track adjustment video. Now we're good to go. This sled is ready to go for the winter. Everything's set up. It's got its new track on it. And uh, we'll have a great time out on the snow this winter. Hope this is helpful for you guys on how to change a track on your Polaris axis with the belt drive system. And have a great winter. Make sure you share the videos, like the videos, and then subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll see you next time in Mountain Slaughter Garage.